Okay, so we started recording. I, yeah, like I was saying, I understand that you're all working, you're now applying to the different um, jobs, both on LEAP and outside of LEAP. And some job applications might require you to create cover letters. Some don't necessarily ask for them. Um, so this is just a preparation of the ones that do. And since you're going to have to apply to approximately 15 to 20 jobs per day, or like to 20 in a month, um, we want to simplify the time that it takes for you to craft one single cover letter. Um, so it, it kind of becomes a habit for you to actually understand how to craft it in less than 15 minutes. Um, so having that good mindset of what needs to go first, what needs to be in the middle and the last, so you can easily just write one. Um, I know that it can be a bit overwhelming, especially if you're doing a lot of easy apply and then you find that cover letter and you're just rushing to go to the next job. Um, so yeah, it, at the end of this session, I hope that we are going to have like a positive mindset towards writing a cover letter and actually understanding that you can put in a, a small amount of time to think about it clearly and effectively and still um, write great cover letters and you proceed to the next job application and things like that. Um, so yeah, I hope you're not missing out on other jobs just because um, cover letters seem like a lot of work to do. Um, so yeah, let's, let's just start with why you need a cover letter. So the main thing is obviously because some companies actually want you to write a cover letter, but that's not the main thing. The main thing is for you to actually convince um, the recruiter that you're the right person for the job or why they should consider you for that first interview in the first place. So um, cover letter and uh, so between a cover letter and a resume. So a resume is very comprehensive and it has everything that you need to, um, that you need or that is, that explains your skills, your professional experience or even the projects that you've done. But um, the one thing with a cover letter is it picks out some specific um, some specific things on your CV. It could be the skills or um, your experience that highly, highly relates to that one company that you're trying to apply. So you could have all the skills and all the lists on your on your resume, but like are all of them actually um, will all of them actually be needed for this specific role? So cover letter helps you to pick out certain things on your CV that are going to highlight exactly um, how those specific skills um, align to the job you're currently applying for. So it could be, um, yeah, so it could be the skills, it could be you worked on a similar project on a different company that kind of relates to what this company is doing and you're trying to emphasize that on the cover letter. So when, you, when the recruiter is going through your CV, they'll actually understand, it'll be easier for them to, um, to read through. Uh, and understand exactly why you're good for this job. So just on description, uh, cover letter is a one page summary or sometimes um, with sometimes when you needed to apply. So how it happens. So sometimes you are required on a job portal to upload your cover letter. And in some portals, they have just left you a blank space that you need to type in words and fill in um, your motivation for applying that job. Or on LinkedIn, yeah, same as LinkedIn. So on LinkedIn, it could be, I've never seen upload your cover letter, but it leaves that blank space for you to write um, your motivation or your cover letter. So, um, so yeah, so that's normally traditionally or before, 
So those are two types. So it could be a one page summary that just has, um, it just has your cover letter, or it could be you typing in the words on, um, on the portal. So the one thing with a cover letter is it has something that SCV doesn't have is it has to evoke emotion. You have to actually express why you're interested in this certain role. So it could be things like you're passionate about um, you're passionate about a certain thing it could be you're passionate about medical software and you're trying to tell the recruiter that so something you being passionate about um having that medical uh, or your love for medical software is not really visible on um on your resume but it's something that you can try to highlight on your cover letter so try as much to put that human touch onto your cover letter and yeah try to yeah it has to kind of evoke emotion and move the recruiter to reading and um, so there are different different people can send different cover letters to the same recruiter but it's how you express yourself through that letter or your motivation behind or what drives you to actually apply for this role that is going to i mean the recruiter is also human and that if they're going to be moved by your cover letter then it's going to you're going to get a higher chance of having that first interview and then it should explain why exactly you're a great fit for that specific role so that is why you need a cover letter so the other thing is um, to highlight your relevant qualifications so like we mentioned um, it could be you could have a lot of experience or a lot of projects that you've worked on but that one specific project for example if you're applying to gokada you have already done something with logistic optimization so you could have listed like five projects but if you highlight that one specific project that highly relates to um, Gokada so, or other, um, other last mile companies, for example, Bold or Uber, if you present, if you highlight that specific project on your resume, it's going to give the, it's going to be easy for you to get that first interview because you're kind of showing your relevant qualifications um, or something that stands out from your CV that needs that the that the recruiter needs to understand. So it should also show your motivation, and this is like why you're passionate about applying that role. And the other thing with cover letters is it gives the recruiter a chance to understanding your personality style and also writing style. So um, it's very evident from different cover letters that you can tell the voice or how someone writes or how someone expresses themselves. Um, the different people are different. So uh, a recruiter will get to know more about you, about your personality, just based on the cover letter. And sometimes we call it the voice, the voice of a person or, yeah. So um, when to write a cover letter. So like we mentioned before, it's not really a must for you to write a cover letter to all the 220 jobs that you'll be applying for, but just write it when it's essential. So when to write it is when the job post specifically asks you to, to do a cover letter. And then for, this is for mission-driven organizations, the one thing that they are always um, they're always looking to make impact. So if you try and express that kind or just show appreciation for um, being in an impactful environment or why you're motivated to be in an impactful environment, mission-driven organizations love to see that and they want to actually see someone who joins their team because they want to make that difference in their company or make a difference in, yeah, not in, not in the company but in what the company does and the other time when to write a cover letter is when you need to give information that is not on your resume so like we mentioned um you can try it um we can tell your, your 
your your love and passion for medical software on your CV, this is where it comes there. So if you feel like I know you, if you sometimes when you're applying to jobs, there are those jobs that you are like 100% sure this is what I want to do. This is the job I want for myself. And then there are the other ones you're like, oh, I qualify for the, I qualify for all these requirements. So let me just apply and try my luck. But the one job that you actually want, and uh, this is even if it doesn't require you to write a cover letter, this is where you you can choose to actually add include a cover letter to your application and send it to um, the recruiter. So if it's on a job posting and it doesn't give you a space to write the cover letter and you actually want it, um, this is your chance to go research and find that um, maybe the recruiter's email or the company's email, and then you can maybe write your um, interest for the company, your motivation, or and then you're like, I already submitted my application, but this is just an extra email to show you like why I really need this job. And the other times when you should just consider is when it's marked optional on a job post and when you already have uh, content ready to be submitted. So yeah, and then there's no need to submit when it doesn't require, when a job doesn't require you to submit. And then also when there's nowhere on the portal, but again, there's an option to find an email and also express your motivation to join a company. Um, so things to note, uh, during this SJS phase. Um, so since you're aiming for like 20 to 25 jobs per day, you need to um, train how to write one quickly. And also not just writing for the sake of writing, but actually writing, expressing your actual motivation and writing a good one and also something that evokes emotion in less than like 15 minutes. So it should also, um, so we, it's advisable to have a template that you can reuse. What I mean by a template is you have, so there are some areas that will change in the template. So you could have a cover letter with maybe five paragraphs and then the middle paragraph highly highlights your skills about data engineering or Gen AI and it lists um, your roles or just achievements that you've done. And since the other parts might change, let's say the first paragraph and the last one, depending on the organization, um, you'll still have that main body that you can reuse for a different organization. And that's going to make it easy and efficient for you to navigate this job application phase easily. So um, just a thing to note is, um, use the Tenex to record um, outside applications. Um, otherwise, you won't know whether they, we won't know whether you have applied or not. This is, this is a message from Good Day from Leap. So yeah, just thought to add it there. Um, so before writing, before writing a cover letter, um, you've done a lot about company research, so I don't think I need to go in depth into that, but just um, research and then analyze the job description and then reflect to take some time um, to reflect on your experience and your motivation for that company. So uh, think about how your skills could be useful to that organization. Have I done a similar project? Um, even if it's data engineering, you've built an ETL pipeline that is reusable, that's something that you can highlight on your cover letter. So just really reflect on your skills and your experience and why you like that company. And then, uh, yeah, things to note before writing. And then, so when writing a cover letter, this is the standard structure for um, writing the cover letter. So at the top here, you have the contacts or the details, which in um, in the other scenarios, like uh, on LinkedIn, where it just has a box, you can consider to add 
the contact details on top um, but also pay note because some um, some have like minimum minimum number of words that you need to have so if um, if you find yourself in such a scenario where um, the you have limited number of words and your body has more words and you feel like you've not expressed yourself fully you can omit the contact details part and um, just leave the body or just start with the greetings. So dear, this, this, and then your body and everything. So yeah, just a point to note because um, applications are evolving and they're becoming different um, nowadays. So if it's, if it's the company or if it's a company or if it's a portal or yeah, if it's a portal that requires you to upload a cover letter, this should be the structure to keep in mind when writing one. So um, once you have the contact details, so for the company and then for yourself first and then for the company, and then you have an intro. So this is greetings for the hiring. So this is a greetings for the hiring manager. We're going to talk about what to put in the intro and the body and the conclusion bit of it, but basically just the structure of um, just the structure of the cover letter. And then, um, so what I haven't added here is the contact details above. And yeah, I think I've said if it's if it's the if it's on LinkedIn and you have that box to write a limited number of words, you can omit them. Um, so into the actual content for what to have in the cover letter. So you have the first paragraph. So this is after saluting the hiring manager. So if you can find out the name of the hiring manager, but if you don't know who the hiring manager is, feel free to just leave it as dear hiring manager, and comma. And then you start off with an introduction. So this should be a hook or it should basically hook the person to continue reading, um, to continue reading what's in the cover letter. So there's some things or just consider this, some things when you're reading a book and then the first paragraph is not as catchy, you're going to just leave that thing or maybe a blog you're going to just do away with it but you have to be creative this way so you have to find that personal connection between you and your skills and find that like unique connection between you your skills and the company between your skills and the company so you have so you like hook the reader to it and then optional to state the position you're applying for and if you had like if you are referred by someone um it's also very important to add this because um yeah uh, someone will trust you more if they were sent by someone they know so you like i was referred to you by such and such person etc and then you continue that's also one way to hook um you to hook your cover letter to the reader so the first thing is to so the, on the still on the content of the first um, paragraph is to find um, something unique on your skills and why you want to be in the company. So and this should just be brief. You don't need to like write um, all your skills in the first paragraph. It should just be what's really relevant. We're going to look at an example in the next page and then briefly express your interest in the organization and then highlight the relevant experience and skills that you have. So an example of a cover letter. So this is for a data engineer. So for this person, so here we've listed uh, the difference between a strong and a weak cover letter. So on the first, on the first one, he has mentioned that as a seasoned data engineer with over six years of experience in designing, building, and maintaining data systems, the recruiter already can continue reading your um, your CV or your cover letter because what they're looking for a data engineer. What does a data engineer do? 
they design and build and also maintain pipelines. So once I know, once you tell me that you can actually do this, I'm intrigued to go deeper and understanding more of what um, of what you're doing. So, and then you express your interest, you're, exp you're applying for the role and the position, and then you also highlight your the things that stand out for you. So this one mentioned things like they have a proven track record in leveraging this and then they also so if you look at this but you can see that they use the um the xyz formula that we i think you've all been shared with our it's in the careers manual so you can see that they highlighted the impact they had so it led to like 30 percent increase in efficiency at the current role or what kind of impact did you actually have? Or if you don't have work experience at the moment, feel free to write about um, the projects that you've also done and what stood out on the projects that you had. And then um, you can then go ahead and talk about the expertise in ETL development, warehousing, according, and also with the passion for problem solving makes me confident in my ability to contribute significantly to your team. And then we can have a look at this other one that's considered a weak um, hook. So I'm writing to apply for a data engineer that I saw on your website. I have a degree in this and I have done some projects. So you haven't mentioned exactly what kind of projects you've done. Just say they relate to data engineering. But if you um, so I think I have the skills that you're looking for. So I'm not really sure what this person does. So when writing the hook, I need to be able to continue reading what's next. So this is very blunt. I Yes, you can do some projects um, in data engineering, but you need to be more specific. Um, so the hood, hook, the reader can be intrigued to read more. Um, Okay, so that's basically on the hook. So, and then also feel free, don't limit yourself to this. Um, feel free to try and be as creative as you can on the hook. Um, so if you find something fun about the company, feel free to talk about it. Or if, yeah, just be very creative uh, when writing the hook. And then, so the, Next thing would be, yes, Ahmed. Uh, can you back uh, to the previous slide, please? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, from here, I, I understand. I understand that the point should be, I should show my skills and uh, mm -hmm. I should be specific in the project. So, can you state uh, the rest of the point? Sorry. Uh, can you state the points that make the hook uh, strong? Um, so they are very many, and I don't want to say that you be specific on this. So it could be, um, so there's this one I saw that made a fun fact about the company and then went ahead to, um, so it could be, it could be like a fun fact about the company or just things like, um, so for example, at an academy, you could start by expressing something that's um, like, like you feel, for example, the impact that an academy has on the African students. So if you start by expressing something like you're motivated to join because you feel like the impact it has had on, on people and you'd love to also uh, feel the same way impactful, that already hooks the reader to, okay, you understand our mission and you want to um, join. So it could be very different. Why? Because the companies are very different in the first place. And the second one, um, yeah, the companies are very different. And this is also a chance for you to be more creative. And also, but if you, if you don't find that fun fact or that, one thing that um, hooks you, just feel free to make it, um, to just use your skills. So 
the skills that you have or a project that you've done that is relevant to that company, um, feel free to add it. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of something. Um, Um, so, for example, I was thinking, so let's go back to the first example about um, Gokada and the project that you've done. So, if you're applying to a company, for example, like Bolt or Uber, you're, you can leverage the project, the project you did that is very similar and add it here. So, you could start with something like you build, uh, you I don't know, an, an ETL pipeline for a Gokada and which is also a last mile uh, delivery company. And then talk about the, th um, the analysis that you did, the models that you built for it. And as someone who works for Bolt, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to be like, okay, you have, so you've done, you've, worked with like a competing company and at this you've done something for a competing company and you've also uh you also like made an impact there or you did a project that could possibly be impactful to that company so things just things like that feel free to get creative um i can't say for sure exactly what needs to be here but um yeah does does that make sense Yes, thank you. Uh, I got it. Okay, thanks. Um, so we can continue. So the second paragraph, so the second paragraph could be something, it should now expand. Now, it should expand to what you talked about on the first paragraph. So the, past, the first paragraph is basically just um, explaining uh why you want to get that job and how why you think you're good for that job the second one should be now expanding on your achievements for your achievements or even your skills it's now a broader explanation of the first paragraph and it goes deeply into your skills and what you've done and the impacts that you've had um or the projects that you've done so you could go deeper into it so this is it basically expands what you had already mentioned in the hook so the first one was an introduction the second one you're now getting into details of your skills so um you have to be very purposeful about every line that goes into this paragraphs because um every every single line um should somehow much to why it should be it should be very useful so every single line should be very useful to the current job that you're applying to so and it should also try to highlight your relevant achievements to the role so um let's have a look at an example here um so an example of a strong one is um in my current role as a data engineer you have been responsible for this and you have successfully implemented this increased efficiency etc and then now you stick to your skills like i you're skilled in python etc aws cloud and then mention your most significant accomplishments to it and then um just finally go back to why you're excited or why you're excited about the opportunity and how you think it's going to help you grow in a way so if if a recruiter sees that you you are also interested in the growth that the company you're applying to will bring to you and yourself they will see they will have a positive they'll have a positive view of you and they'll be like okay um you're interested in growing and yeah things like that and then if we look at this other one uh, you're interested, you're applying for this, you have this. Um, I think I could do a good job because I'm good at problem solving and you work hard 
So I've worked on a few projects, but nothing too major. I usually do blah, blah, blah. This is a very weak one. And I want to work for your company because I think it would be a good opportunity for me. I'm ready for a new challenge and I think a lot. So if we if we if we again go back to um the XYZ, um how to structure your roles and achievements for using the XYZ formula, you'll find that um you'll find that it's it's more comprehensive, like it guides you exactly on how to structure how to present yourself like your skills and the impacts that you've had so yeah if you if you also leverage that it's going to help you improve um, your writing and then um on the last paragraph or on the last one it's basically just a recap of what has been said in the first and the second paragraph in the first and the second um, so the body and the introduction. So this is like a closing off and then you continuously reinforce um, your interest in the organization, thank the employer for their consideration and time, and then also maintain a positive and enthusiastic tone. Let's have a look at an example. So in closing, I'm excited about the opportunity to bring the blend uh, the unique blend of skills and experience to your team. And I'm confident that my expertise in data engineering coupled with my passion for problem solving will make a great con or a significant contribution to your organization. So this three, this two sentences are kind of re-emphasizing or just a summary of what you've said on the second, on the second and the first, um, yeah, on the body and the body and also the intro. So um, you look forward to the possibility of discussing how you can help drive your data strategy forward and thank you for considering my application. As opposed to this week one, so I guess that's it. I'm pretty good at data and stuff and I think I could do a good job for you. Let me know if you want to chat or something, thanks. Um, so yeah, pay attention to those small things be very intentional about every statement that goes into your cover letter. So, um, yeah, so there are, there's this link that has uh, numerous uh, job descriptions or samples that you can use to practice. Um, so for example, this link is for data engineer. And it has like a lot of different um, samples for cover letters. So for example, for an analytics engineer, an AWS data engineer, Azure, just so many samples that you can maybe read through it. And in a way um, it can help you, it can help guide you on how to um, write a good cover letter. So the other links are also for machine learning engineering and generative AI engineer. So the goal for today's exercise is to, uh, so the goal for this week's exercise is to, sorry. Yeah, it's to it's for you to um, actually um, write a template for a cover letter. So when I say a template, it means there are some of the things that are going to change in your cover letter. So you have the introduction bit of it, and then you have the body, and then you have, um, let me just share the screen. So you have the body, you have the intro, the body, and the conclusion. So some of the things are going to be, um, since you're applying to many jobs, some of the things are going to be constant. For example, the body part of it, if you're applying for a specifically data engineering role, because the body tells us more about um, your skills and your achievements and your roles and your accomplishments. So for the exercise, you're going to sort of create a template, but you're going to be guided by the job descriptions that were given for the interview prep questions. So you're going to create a cover letter specifically for the positions that 
Um, let me just show you. So for the interview preps, you were given the different job descriptions. So for example, um, for data engineering was, uh, I'm just sending it as it loads. So for, yeah, try this tab instead. So for data engineering, you had a client support um, data engineering role. So you're going to, I know you've noticed that most of the requirements and the skills are kind of repetitive. If you're a data engineer, you won't miss something like an ETL or R or SQL. There's some of those things that you've seen that are very common. And those are the things that you need to emphasize more on the body part, such that when you're going to craft a, sim a different um, a different cover letter for a different company, you're still going to maintain the body because it's it carries more weight and then you can maybe change just the first um the first paragraph that's the intro so in the intro you're going to change um how maybe if a similar project or yeah on the intro just change one or two things so if you did a project that's similar to that company or just evaluate your skills or something that relates to that company and then just alter the first intro and yeah like also just try to proofread it and see that it kind of so it kind of makes sense so um yeah so when writing to a different company you're just going to change the intro and maybe the conclusion bit of it um but the body will not have a lot of things to change so when writing a body try to as much not tailor it to this one specific job but for something that can be very reusable to other applications as well so um yeah that's the exercise for this week so um yeah write a cover letter and then um uh, yeah it's, it's something that try to as much think about reusability um yeah so make sure that the body is something that you don't need to change when you apply to a different data engineering role as well. Um, so yeah, um, deliverables, it's just on a one page cover letter. So the first is just an introduction about how to craft a good cover letter and what the contents that it needs to have um, so for this exercise, um, try to also include the, so on the way we talked about on the structure here. Yeah, so here on the structure, try to also include the contact details and the intro, the body. And so when you're going to so if you find yourself, maybe it's a LinkedIn job application and you have um, that slot for you to write your cover letter, you can just copy and paste some of the things into uh, from your cover letter to, to the document. Um, I hope this helps. Um, any questions so far? um okay so no questions um okay so i think that that marks the end of the session um have a great evening and yeah all the best with crafting your cover letters and also all the best on your job application have a great evening bye